Okay, so today we're going to talk about one of the coolest things that I have ever learned ever in my, in my academic career. Um, this will just blow your minds. We're going to play a little game first, okay. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, play a game with numbers. So we'll put out a 1 and we'll stick out another 1. And that's a kindergarten problem. What's 1 plus 1? Well, it is 2. Very good. Now, here's the rules of the game. Whatever the uh, new number is, you're going to add to the number that just came before it. Okay? Does that make sense? So, so in this case, we're going to take this 2 and this 1, and we're going to add them. And it should give us our new number, which, of course, is 3. And then we'll continue that forever, because this is a sequence. It doesn't end. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 and 8, 21, so on and so forth and so on and so forth forever. And now you're thinking to yourself, well, that's, that's just great, Mr. Broder. So what? Well, part of the so what comes because th this is a famous uh, sequence called the Fibonacci sequence. Why is it called the Fibonacci sequence? Well, it was discovered by this guy, uh, Leonardo Fibonacci, who was an Italian who lived back in the 11 or 1200s, long time ago. Anyway, he noticed this number sequence happening in a lot of places uh, in nature and all around him. You can see this sequence in the way that flowers put out their petals, or plants put out their leaves, or sunflowers distribute their, their seed heads, uh, the way rabbits multiply. The, I mean, this thing pops up just about everywhere. And when something like this pops up everywhere, we tend to give it a name. This is the Fibonacci sequence. This isn't the part that blows your mind yet. It's coming. Okay, let's, let's keep playing with our Fibonacci sequence, but this time we're going to change the rules. And instead of adding numbers to get the next consecutive number, what we're going to do is take a number and divide it by the number behind it. So for the first one, we'll take 1 and divide it by 1, and we'll get 1, right? And then for the next one, we'll take 2 and divide that by 1, and we should get 2. The next one we'll do 3 divided by 2 and we'll get 1.5 and we'll just keep doing that and see if anything strange happens. Well, there's something strange. These sixes will go on forever. But let's keep going and see what happens. As we go through the Fibonacci sequence doing these divisions, uh, we'll notice that there's a certain ratio coming up. These are ratios, by the way, right? And we, if we figure out what that ratio equals as a decimal, we'll, we'll notice that they start trending towards this weird decimal, this 1.6, almost 1.62. Uh, the higher we go, the closer it gets to that number, but never quite getting to it. So it's really, really strange. Now the stranger thing is, this ratio, this 1.618, it pops up just about everywhere in nature too. Remember this ratio, we're, this 1.618. We're going to come back to it. And uh, for this next part, we're going to use some graph paper. So the first thing we want to do is just uh, make a square. And right here, you can see that I have a perfect square. I'm going to label it number 1. That's the first number in, in my Fibonacci sequence. And the next number in my Fibonacci sequence was a 1 as well. So I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to label that 1. So we have the first two numbers of our Fibonacci sequence here, 1 and 1. You guys remember what the next number was? It was, you got it by adding them together. So the next number is 2. So a way to think about that is just to take the long side of the squares together and then make a square that's that big. So you'll notice what happens is they have made a, a rectangle now. Sorry, I goofed there. So what I'm going to do now is just build a square that is the length of the long side of that rectangle and you'll see that it's two units plus one unit and so this should be labeled three. I can just continue this process by taking the long side of the new rectangle and building boxes uh, to fit it, right? And this one is going to be the next number in the Fibonacci sequence. Now I'll take the long side of this new rectangle and I should be able to get one more. Uh, you very quickly run out of room here, but um, what you've got is a series of boxes that uh, goes on forever. And here's a really kind of cool thing. I'm going to attempt to draw something. Now that spiral is called a Fibonacci spiral. Think back to what we did when we were dividing the Fibonacci sequence and, and coming up with that weird ratio of 1.618, right? That describes the ratio of um, the... Um, of the numbers together, the, the previous number to the next number. So if you, if you look here, this, this section right here, this 2, is 1.618 times larger than these 1's put together. That ratio 
is forming this spiral. Now you see this spiral in uh, nautilus shells, seashells. This is the way galaxies organize themselves. This is the way hurricanes form. They all follow this pattern. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think nautilus shells do particularly well in math class, and yet they organize themselves all around this mathematic principle. So this ratio, this 1.618, so on and so forth, pops up so many places and is seen in so many different areas that it has a name. It's called the Golden Ratio. And um, mathematicians actually gave it a name uh, other than that. Uh, they, they call it phi, or phi, depending on which side of the uh, Atlantic Ocean you live on. It's a Greek letter. It's, this is the capital letter phi, and this is the lowercase letter phi. But it's used to represent this number that just seems to appear in so many different places. So it really is incredible the, the number of places you can find phi. Um, people use phi uh, as a ratio to make their artwork look beautiful. Um, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci obviously used it in the Mona Lisa. You can see right there, right? There's our Fibonacci boxes. Uh, the ancient Greeks were aware of it, obviously, because they built their Parthenon in that shape. And so were the Japanese artists who, who painted this, this wave right here. Um, where else do we see it? Well, we, we can see it not only in the way spiral galaxies form, uh, but hurricanes form this way too. Uh, even the continents seem to have arranged themselves in, in ways that, that follow this, this blueprint. Okay, so finding phi is a lot more fun uh, out here in the real world than it is being stuck in the classroom. So I'm going to help you do that. Um, in order to find phi in, in, in the world, uh, you can use a tool called calipers, and it just so happens that I've made some, so I'll show you how they work. So these are the calipers right here. You and can see what they do is they measure the ratio phi that we discovered <laughs> earlier uh, in the world. Okay, if, uh, if I were to draw a line from this point to this point and call that 1, uh, the ratio of that length to this length is um, what we call phi. Okay? So no matter how I move these arms, that ratio stays constant. So I should be able to find phi in all sorts of things like, He's on uh, He's on like toads um, <laughs> and things, things that are man-made and things that are natural. Ah! <laughs> okay, shut ah. it off. So by using these calipers, we should be able to uh, measure phi. I'm going to put one tip of the calipers on something that I think might be interesting, and the opposite tip on, on the opposite end of what I might uh, what I find interesting. And then the middle tip ought to point out phi wherever it exists. So let's try this on the, my victim over here. Here's, uh, here's Tobin. Everybody says he's a pretty handsome kid, but we're going to find out for sure, because if he is, then he should be built according to the laws of phi. So here we go. Uh, if I put my tip right here on his chin and this tip right at the top of his head, well, look at that. It looks like his eyes are in the right place. That's good. That's good news, Tobin. Okay. And if I do it this way, right here, well, that looks like the center of his forehead. That, that's a pretty good thing, too. Look at that. That's right where his hand begins. And so there's Phi showing up there as well. So I'm going to send my boys out and they're going to go around and they're going to look for phi in nature and they're going to look for phi in the things that they love and we're going to see where we can find it. And you can do this too at home.